What are your thoughts about how your position room has progressed during the last 15 practices? Uh, you know, I, I told the guys in the, in the position meeting before we came out on the field today that, you know, everybody's at a little bit different place in terms of their career, their, their individual journey. But I did think to a man uh, that the guys that were healthy to, to compete in the spring, every single one of them got better. Um, and, and that's the objective, right? I mean, that, that, that is the objective of our program on a daily basis is, is that continual improvement. And I did think that, that the defensive end group in and of itself uh, made incremental progress through the course of spring. And each one of those guys got better, whether you're talking about, you know, Jared and Pat, um, who obviously we're counting on uh, to play significant reps or young guys that just got here in the program. Um, I was pleased with our progression as, as we went through the spring. How good was the spring for Byron to finally get 15 successive practices back to back? I thought it was critical for him, um, you know, for, for a variety of different reasons since he's been here. Um, he hasn't had the, the sustained reps. Um, having having that opportunity kind of present itself this spring uh, and him taking advantage of it was, was critical. Um, and I thought he did get better throughout the course of spring. Um, and I thought it showed up in, in the showcase the other day. I thought he did a really nice job and uh, I was pleased with, with how he did. Yeah, you obviously have Jared and Patrick and they've done a lot at this level. I mean, uh, Edmund has played a ton of football too. Ideally, going into August, is four defensive ends that you can count on the number? I mean, I'm probably, you're probably looking for eight. I don't know, but what what do you, what should a roster makeup look like? Yeah, for defensive ends you can count on. For me, in a perfect world, you want the the five, um, really, because you're going to have a two deep rotation. But you want that fifth utility guy that has the the you know because you're one play away. You know, so I, I never want it to be so thin where you're at four and one thing happens and now you don't have a, a full two deep rotation. Having the fifth guy is is, is critical, and uh, you know we're still in the, in the process of, of determining who that's going to be and, and letting that that kind of competition play out. What did you see from Gilbert? You know, I thought Gilbert got more confident as as the spring went on. You know, each guy who's transferred in, um, you know, and we've had obviously a lot of experience with that, has had a little bit different transition. You know. Jermaine from day one was kind of like that alpha personality, jumped right up front, uh, took a leadership role. But really, probably on that team, he had to do that. Um, Jared was very similar in the sense that he was uh, outspoken and loud when he came in. But that team did have a little bit more veteran to it, so he wasn't a leader leader right off the bat. I think Gilbert walked in and saw, man, this is a group that, that has some experience. And I think early on, he was trying to figure out how exactly he fit in, in the big picture equation. Um, as he got more confident and as he got more comfortable, I saw him play faster uh, throughout the course of, of spring. And I really just think his best ball is ahead of him. I, you know, that was part of our exit meeting discussion was, okay, I think this spring was a great opportunity to see exactly where we're at. And then now we know what we need to do to, to take your game to another level. I fully expect he, for him to do it because he's capable and he has the skill set. We all see Jared's energy, but is he, is he doing a lot to help him? not just put it out there, but put forward into the younger guys and you're seeing that? He, he really has. I, you know, that was one of the things I have been most pleased about. Um, you know, I think it's easy to see his, his progression on the field. I thought he improved as a player uh, this spring, but where I thought he made his most growth was in the meeting rooms. Um, you know, I think he has a much better understanding of the position, and I think when you do have that confidence that you understand um, your willingness to help others and kind of be thrust into that role that, that is a leadership role, um, you know, becomes uh, it just becomes part of what he's trying to leave a legacy of here, uh, much like the guys that came before him. Um, and and I and I did see that leadership piece come out in in him. Um, you know, one of the guys I know he's kind of directly taken under his wings is, is Lamont Green, you know, Boots. Because um, you know, I think Jared sees a little bit of Boots in him from the standpoint that, you know, he's a, uh, he's a, was a, a smaller guy, but really athletic coming in. And Jared, you know, went through that as, he, as a young player. And now he's trying to help other guys in that same situation. The next time you guys are all out here, is, is it an expectation that Jaden will be good to go? Or is it, is it more hope for him? No, it, it, it's, it's an expectation. Uh, from the standpoint, if he stays on track uh, with all of his, his rehabilitation and, and uh, everything that, that our trainers have him doing, uh, we're getting closer to, to him coming back. I don't have a, a specific date or deadline, but it should be by the time we get back on the, on the field in the summer. Can you, can you project, or can you look at his film and what you guys like to do and, and have an idea if he could be somebody that could be part of that five deep? Yeah, you know, I mean, 
his his athleticism and his understanding of what we do uh, is there. You know, it, that won't be the question. The question will be more just the application uh, of the scheme and, and then the physicality at this level is a little bit different. So, um, you know, we, we're, there will be a transition period for him, but I fully expect him to be one of the guys competing to, to be in that top five group. What did you, like, just reflecting on Boots, like, from what you recruited, the player you recruited versus, like, what you saw, you just talked about, sometimes you see him show some strength out there sometimes. And, like, and you know, he, he has, he has a, a great, uh, I think the, the best way to say it is, is a love for this place and a toughness and a desire and a want to. That even though he's a young guy that should still be in high school, you know, with, with his other classmates, he comes out here and he competed in a battle. And I think that even though he didn't win all the battles, that's going to pay a dividend going forward uh, for him. Because I think he's one of those guys that when he gets a little bit bigger, when he gets a little bit stronger and the light kind of clicks for him, he's going to make a really big jump really fast. Um, I, I told him today in, in our meeting, um, you know, he's one of those guys that two years from now, we're going to joke about that first spring and how he was going through it all for the first time when, you know, he's kind of turned into a man uh, while he's here. And, and, and I, I was really pleased with with uh, what he was able to do, it's all new to him, um, but he, he attacked it every day. And uh, I think that kind of mindset, coupled with his ability, is gonna to lead to success. How close is Dante Anderson to kind of being a contributor? I mean, we, we see his speed out there racing Coach Norvell. Yeah, but... no, Dante is one of the guys I thought who made as, as much improvement as anybody. Um, you know, if you went from where he was a year ago at this time to where he is now, um, it, it's pretty dramatic. Uh, in terms of the level of improvement in all areas. Just uh, his, his on the field uh, fundamentals, his understanding of the defense, his uh, physical strength, um, you know, really anything that you, any box that you could check, he got better at. Uh, so I, what I, my message to him is continue that because, you know, if, if we continue to make the progress that we made from last year to this year to next fall or to the next spring, um, watch out because he's going to be he's going to be a good player for us. What are, what are the kickers leaving out between now and here? Uh, you know they're, they're going to have their their time where they're going to they're still going to work as a as a unit. Um, you know I want them to get a little bit of rest and, and away from here. Um, they all kind of have their individual coaches that they like to go to, um, which I'm not against at all um, because you know those are, there's a comfort factor that goes along with that. Um, and, and they're going to come back and they're going to be ready to, to go with the rest of the unit uh, for, for our summer workouts. Uh, but up until the, now, between now and then, they're going to continue to get their work and it's going to be on a voluntary basis, but they're going to stay sharp. But I do want them to, to get a little bit of rest, um, you know, going into what's going to be a, a pretty good grind in the summer. It's probably hard to know for sure when Mike is going to be 100%. So when it comes to the return game, um, are there things that guys can work on between now and camp, or is it just wait for camp? No, we're, they'll they'll catch balls, and um, you know the, the great thing is is rules have kind of evolved and changed a little bit. Um, when we get to have those those summer workouts, uh, you know there will be opportunities for them to to, to catch balls, and you know some sometimes those will be supervised and, and coached, and other times those won't be. But uh, you know we'll. Uh, We'll have opportunities for them to continue to work because we're going to need it. You know, even even if if Micah is 100 percent good good to go on the first day of training camp, uh, we still need other guys that are prepared to do it. Um, so so that that development is going to continue. What kind of flexibility is Winston right given? You know, having Winston back is awesome. I mean, I think it's a great story in and of itself. Just. Um, what he's had to go through the last year, but uh, you know, with his experience and, and his proven explosiveness as a returner, having him back there certainly adds to a group of guys that are, are very talented. How do you assess the performance from the entire roster? I thought consistent, and uh, the, the other thing I thought was resilient. Each one of them had one day through the course of, of uh, spring where I thought they weren't at their best. And in both cases, the next day was a really, really good day. Um, so I thought the competition was good. Um, you know, the plan is, you know, more than likely to continue that that competition. 
uh, moving forward and, and allowing them to battle it out. But I thought both guys had very solid springs. Bishop Thomas has done some cross training at the defensive end during the spring. What kind of signs have you seen from him as he brings to the outside? Yeah, you know, we, we're trying to find, you know, ways to get the best 11 on the field and, and every, every group. Um, and, you know, we have a lot of depth at, at defensive tackle. And, and he is a unique athlete that can do a lot of different things. So um, we are trying to train as many guys as we possibly can to, that, that kind of fit that cross-train role. And he's, done, he's done a fairly good job with, with the opportunities that he's had. Did you know you always wanted Andreas out there returning punts, or was it after a few weeks of seeing him play? You're like, I, I can use you over here, buddy. Uh, I, I, a little bit of both. You know, I, we, uh, you, know you could see his, his elite explosiveness and change of direction through some of the off-season stuff even before we started spring ball and he's one of those guys if you get him to consistently be confident in catching punts he could be dangerous you know he's, he's an explosive player and, and he's a really talented young guy you mentioned the depth inside how much does it help to have guys like Braden Fisk and Dennis Briggs who have played some defensive end during their golf careers oh it, it's huge I mean because at the end of the day we're going to find ways to get our best four defensive linemen on the field um and if that means kind of guys have to cross train and and in some situational stuff, you know, we we always have talked about like our rabbit package as being something that was important to us, which was essentially three defensive ends on the field on third down. I mean, there might be opportunities on rundown to get a, a third defensive tackle on the field or or whatever may present itself. Just because we do have some depth and some flexibility um, with those guys that are kind of hybrid type players that have played both before. So, um, you know, I'm sure we'll be creative in terms of how we use our, our personnel. And uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of talent in the room, which is a good thing. Uh, but we got to find roles and opportunities for them all to, to be successful.